Dartmoor National Park is the largest and wildest area of open country in the south of England, a landscape strewn with ancient monuments, granite tours, and which experiences rapidly changing weather. But it is probably best known for its ponies. Ponies have roamed Dartmoor for thousands of years. The first mention of them is in the Doomsday Book. Early tin workers used them as pack ponies to bring tin off the moor, and after that era, while some ponies were left to roam free on the moor, others were used for farm work, mainly shepherding and for transport. The upland farmers have rights that go back centuries, allowing them to graze stock freely on the open common, which are usually branded or earmarked. Most foals are born between April and July. Mares carry their foals for just over 11 months, and it is during the last three months before birth the body weight of the foal fetus increases by two thirds. Dartmoor gorse and brambles are an important part of the pony's diet, especially in winter when they graze and browse for most of the day and night, trampling old grasses and burnt gorse in creating room and light for more sensitive plants to become established. The pony, sheep and cattle play an important part in keeping the moor as we see it today. Without them it would be quickly become an impenetrable wilderness. I grew up here on Dartmoor, my mother's Shilson Rocks Dartmoor Pony Stud Farm, just down the hill from here. These are herb Dartmoor mares that grows out, graze out on the moor during the winter. In the spring they'll come back onto the farm to have their foals and some of them will go on to be shown at the county shows. I can't remember when I first started to ride, but I remember well when my parents brought a bright bay pony wrapped in brown paper into the kitchen on my birthday. His name was Little Goose. I'd walk back from primary school, jump on bareback and charge around the moor playing cowboys and Indians. <laughs> Falling off a lot. Decades later, my dream of being a cowboy in the wild west of America became true as I rode quarter horses from Mexico to Canada. I've always loved to be out here photographing the ponies They've been friends and a great comfort, as in school I struggled a lot with dyslexia and then my parents split up. Now my dream is to set up ranches in New Zealand and Colorado for, with these ponies for children and adults to help them heal physically and emotionally <laughs> and at the same time help promote these ponies. These Dartmoor ponies are, with their super temperaments, the best small children's ponies in the world. 
Putting action to my dream, I exported two of my mother's Dartmoor three-year-old fillies to New Zealand earlier this year, Shilston Rocks Sugar Snap and Shilston Rocks Mountain Bay. As flying these fillies was an extremely expensive undertaking, we put them in foal in the middle of the British winter time, so they would have foals in the New Zealand spring. In fact, flying four for the price of two. Although this did add more complications to the already complex import regulations, an expense for the more expensive vet checks. Because the fillies were flying into the hot New Zealand summertime, we clipped them out the week before they left. It was extremely cold on Dartmoor, so we had to pile on the rugs. And I have to say, Mountain Bay did look rather like a pantomime horse. They left the snow behind them on Dartmoor, and after quarantine in both England and New Zealand, they eventually arrived in Hawke's Bay in a drought. This was Mountain Bay's first foal, a lovely bay colt. She was a bit puzzled by him to begin with. We called him Mountain Man. <laughs> oh, <lovely. laughs> a few weeks later, Sugar Snap had a bay filly we were calling Meadow Sweet. Both foals look like their sire, Shilson Rock's North Countryman. Got it? Come on, I want my hat back. Dartmoor ponies are a fundamental part of the Dartmoor landscape. Tourists come from all over the world to see the ponies on Dartmoor. Once a year, the ponies are shown at the famous Widdicombe Fair. After the fair in late September and early October, the local farmers who keep ponies on the moor gather the herds off their particular common. There are three types of ponies which run on the moor. The registered pedigree, which have qualified for Horse of the Year show. The traditional moorland ponies, and the coloured crossbreds. In the 1950s, there were around 30,000 ponies on Dartmoor. Now there are less than 2,000, and the pedigree pony is officially classed as vulnerable by the Rare Breed Survival Trust. In the 80s, the Duchy of Cornwall and Dartmoor Pony Society introduced the Dartmoor Pony Moorland Scheme, which invited pony keepers on Dartmoor to put suitable mares into a duchy moorland enclosure with a pedigree stallion. The colours of the traditional and purebred Dharma pony range from bay, brown, black, grey, chestnut and roan. 
Piebald and skewbald are crossbreds, usually part Shetland. The Darmore Hill Pony Group support all breeds of ponies coming off the moor, but they find there are too many ponies being bred for the domestic market. Once the ponies are gathered in a small enclosure, they are sorted into groups depending on ownership. The farmers then decide which ones to sell and return the others to the moor. A few of these foals will become children's ponies or carriage driving ponies. But sadly, there isn't enough market demand for all these foals. The reality is most will be shot and their meat will be used at the local zoos. The Dartmoor Heritage Trust was formed to prevent the ancient bloodlines of the indigenous Dartmoor ponies from extinction and to maintain its presence on the moor, protecting our heritage for future generations. After filming the drift this year, I chose two traditional type Dartmoor fillies from the long established Dunstan herd and adopted them into the Dartmoor Pony Heritage Trust. I named them Dunstan Whitterborough and Pudgeham after the area of the moor where they had been born. As the demand for ponies has plummeted and many moorland farmers are coming to the conclusion that keeping herds on the moor is no longer financially viable, so traditional herds along with their bloodlines are vanishing forever. <laughs>